All right, I think I've come up with a plan of what I want to do. I'm going to uh, take this piece over to the sandblaster, blast all this coating off of it so I can cut it down and weld on it. I'm going to clock this in this direction and get it as close to this edge as possible. Um, of course, move these two bolts, because so I'm going to cut them off, move this closer to the edge, cut these off, take them out. to uh, make up as much distance as possible <clears throat> for clearancing that box. I want to position this as close to the edge as I can. That looks like it's going to be right on the money right there. I'm pretty sure that this hole, this hole, and this hole, they drilled in themselves. I don't, I don't think Ford would have put this hole in. This was the hole that the bed I'm almost positive, bolted down to. I don't remember. And then they drilled this hole and these two holes. And it just concentrates, especially out here, there's almost nothing out here. But it's beside the point. What I want to use is this hole and this hole, which is really close to the frame. It's got a lot more material over here on this side. It'll spread out the force across this area instead of right here, just dead in the middle. I think that'll just be a better way to go. The width of this, you can see what it is now, I cut a lot out of it, but the width of it was, was clear, it was like this, covering these holes up, which didn't leave me any space to put bolts through. So I cut some of the width away, and I'm gonna put tabs on both sides here to match up these holes. It'll be held on this side, way over here, and way back here in the corner, so three points. Plus it'll have the main bolt that goes through the middle, which goes down through that big giant hole and has a washer on the bottom as a fail safe. All right, I'm just gonna burn it in now.
I left this side in so the, I could get the alignment close to what it was originally. Of course, it's terrible on this side because it doesn't sit flat on the dampener because it didn't grind enough metal off the one side. Okay, now with that side lined up, I can put back, put this back in its original hole where it was originally located. Oh yeah, that looks a lot better. You see where the original hole was, and it's on the one that hasn't moved over there. So this is the alignment from side to side, front to back. I have to still measure, but you can see I've taken off. I can now cut away almost all of this material. So this is probably an inch and a quarter, maybe, or so, of material I'll be able to take out of here. Of course, I can't take it all the way out to the damper, but right about there, I'll be able to take it out. And then on this side, I'm going to uh, build two tabs, one for that hole in the front and one for the hole in the back to bolt it down on this side. That'll make it way, at least in my opinion, way stronger over there. And then I still have to box this up front and back and make it square, of course. It's not squaring out. Okay, to give you an idea of what's going on now, this is the underside of the cross member. And I don't know if you can see that right there. That's where that damper is hitting on this weld. They, they ground this weld down, but obviously not enough. You can see they just kind of, I don't know what they were doing here. They've left it up about a quarter of an inch where it needs to be flat across here. Same way on this side. It's just way too proud of this. And so where when the cup sits on here, you can almost see the outline of the cup right there on this side. It goes around and it's way too far on this side over here. So I got to grind all this down make it flat so this fits in here nicer and it doesn't gouge into the top of that cup and work itself all the way through to where the rubber is. It's real sharp and I mean they just did a poor job of, of fitting this stuff here so. Just got to cut the excess off those two tabs there and shape them. But uh, other than that, all I got to do is the same thing on the other side. All right, time to put the ends on and uh, I think we're done with this. We'll just sandblast it and uh, paint it.
This is the amount of material that I gained. So after modifying the mount, moving it inwards, repositioning the damper, we'll be able to cut off that much material off of this one, which is probably almost an inch. And a little bit more off of this one, it looks like. Maybe, maybe that is a full inch, I don't know. Let's see. Oh no, I'm wrong, inch and a quarter. So that should either give me enough clearance for the boxes when I put the frame back on, or boy, it'll be really close. Got some primer on the pieces. I took the uh, rear cross member off too. Figure I'll paint it since the coating that they put on was really poor. You just kind of threw it on there. It was already starting to rust and I haven't even had this camper butt one year. So I might as well get it all done since I got it all apart. While that's drying, we're going to start working on the flatbed. I think I'm gonna start on this side over here. And I think uh, we're gonna try to take this side piece off and see what's up under there. I think the hardest part's gonna be where this corner meets the uh, tail lights, where this pan is, this assembly back here. I don't know exactly how it's put together, so we'll see once I get under there. All right, down here at this end, I don't know if you can see, let me turn the camera sideways. First thing I do is uh, drill out that ground up the top and uh, cut the wire to separate the lights that are in this side panel. So I can take that side panel off and I'll bolt that ground back on later on. It's only riveted on right now. There's probably one up in the front here too. Yep. Have to take that one out too. Okay, you get the idea. I'm not gonna bore you with the rest of these. You can see I got to go all the way down to the end there. Bring you back when I'm done. Uh-oh. Maybe some of this is welded together. Oh boy, that's, that's gonna suck. There it is. So it looks like I'm gonna have to get the saw out and saw a few of these welds off. There's one back there, one there, one there, one there, and one at the front. So I'm gonna have to separate those to get that side off. One good thing is at least they didn't weld every one of them. I don't know if a saw or maybe a cutoff wheel. Oh, maybe I should try a cutoff wheel. Freaking just under the just wedged in there. Ah. Oh boy. Okay, I'm sure where I screwed it up. So I thought this was welded to that outside channel. Here it's just welded here with the channel that they put in to carry the wire. So I'm gonna have to clamp that back on and weld it back in. I mean, it's not that big of a deal, but I did extra work for nothing. Well, I mean, no, no, I guess it does matter because I have to take this off anyway when I cut this back. So yeah, I had to grind it off anyway. So I just was kind of a roundabout way of doing it. So I guess it wasn't a waste of time. I'm gonna finish taking off the uh, rest of these side pieces. You guys get the idea on how they come off. It's pretty straightforward stuff. I think you need to sit here and watch me do all this. Well, after about <clears throat> an hour of uh, turning those fasteners, we got it all off. Tail lights out. It's 
still have to take this channel out on this side because I'm not going to keep that, I don't think. All that is is a channel for wires to run in. I think I'd rather run them in a regular loom to protect the wire from chafing on that channel. The channel really doesn't do anything. I mean, it's only attached like this one and this one and this one and the one in the end. It doesn't do much. I, I mean, I don't think it really lends a lot to the structural integrity of the of the side, but I could be wrong. This is what this side looks like without the channel. And I guess it, this could twist a little bit, but I just don't know how. It's bolted to that main beam under there on that L piece. And this one's locked into that one. And that one's bolted again right there. So I'm not really sure how it, it would twist anyway. Let me show you some really bad aluminum welding down here. Look at that mess. And the other side's even worse. It's almost like it ran out of gas here for coverage. I don't know. The other side's burnt clear through and it's just a mess. Here's the other side. Look at that right there. That's like a huge crater. And this is just all, oh my. I don't even know what to say. It's not even fused here. Okay, I'm just marking inch and a half from this layout line that I laid out when, we first, when I first uh, put this tape down. That's gonna be the cut line for removing this excess material, which works out to be two inches of material. The reason I'm doing it from here to here, inch and a half, instead of leaving two inches exactly, they cut this back a half inch. I'm doing it from here because this line isn't straight. When they cut it, they just kind of cut these off and they put them together and it goes kind of like that. So I'm trying to keep it as straight as possible. So I'm using this layout line to do it. Go all the way down here and just mark it. Then bring my straight edge in and make a nice straight line. Almost forgot. Got to take that channel off. Well, I don't know if this is recommended, but we're going to give it a shot. Carbide tip blade. It's not bad. Hmm. All right. Now you get the idea on how much wider this was. Here's where the side is gonna be. It's gonna end up right there. Right, let's see if the side fits on. Looks like this tube needs some down on the bottom here. I have to get the die grinder and open this up in the bottom because this piece is twisted in like that a little bit. All right, now that the compressor shut off, 
back down here. You just open that up around there and it's, it's nice. I have it lined up with the uh, holes that I punched to mark where the centers or where the line's going to be for two inches in. So I'm just going to center punch these and drill them. I'm going to start here in the middle in case this piece is slightly bowed. Okay, now I have to cut two inches off of each side of this cross member. Let's see how much longer it is now. Luckily, most, most all the holes will line up, and this hole will get cut out of the corner, so that's nice. I won't have to weld in a hole, I don't think.